Look at that. Up to 31 miles an hour, you can put your top down. Mm hmm Well, which, look at that. Which means you decided to leave the stoplight and had a thought, I really ought to put the top totally. down. Totally. That's why that worked, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're just rolling slow, everybody's looking at you. It's yep. the equivalent of having your Lambo doors up as you cruise. <laughs> See? Welcome to the second generation of the 4 Series. It is the 430i uh -huh. convertible. Yep. This is the car for the middle range of ages and they're working professionals and you wish you weren't working so hard and mm. you wish you were on vacation. It's the same kind of Lexus LC500 buyer at half the cost and half the cylinders. And by the way, Lexus does not <laughs> own the copyrights to that big red bow making machine and this needs to come with a bow because it should. I yeah. think this is a milestone car. This is a mm. birthday car. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. Thank Used to be the aspirational rich person, I've got to have the 3 Series convertible. But who's looking at this anymore? Who's buying this car? Mm, interesting. Okay. $67,000, 67220 It's a lot, yeah. And this is the base. The 430i well, it's, it's the, yes. with the base engine. It's not the B58 that comes base, in, base, in the base, Supra base, base. and it has almost 400 horsepower. This yep. is the four-cylinder, Yep. the two-liter four turbo. Now, we've had that in the 430 Grand Coupe a while back. Uh huh. Yep. And the thing that's amazing about this engine, and I'm going to keep saying it about BMW products, they know how to hide power. You read a number <laughs> really on a BMW Monroney or a BMW spec sheet and you go, that doesn't seem, oh my gosh, yeah. it just, 250 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque, and it feels like more than both those numbers. I agree. In spite of the fact this is a tiny engine in a very expensive car, this car weighs almost 4,000 pounds. Yeah. This has power. And it moves. Real serious power. It really does. Now, this car is also equipped with all the packages. Yes, it is. What's Which strange, helps. it helps. But what's strange is, for example, the adaptive M suspension mm -hmm. is under the premium package. <laughs> and the good steering yes. is under the dynamic package. Yes. It's not under the M handling package, but the no, M handling package there? has the brakes mm -hmm. and the M rear diff. It's like this mix and match, but everything you think corresponds to the right package is under a different package. Well, that's also so something... So you have to buy them all it, that's, to that's, get to what you want. That's the key which thing. Which pushes, pushes the price up. The person looking for the most dynamic <laughs> version has to buy all the packages. Yes. They've split the dynamic yes. elements apart that you would think are BMW elements that would all go under like M. <laughs> nope, they split them up, nope. so you have to get all the packages. So your car that started at about 53, which feels, as much as that's expensive, that feels like the right place for this car, like the low 50s, yep. is now almost 7 because of packages, which is a lot of money. And it's good. Mm -hmm. I must say it's worth it's all good. those packages it's good, yes. because it does have the adaptive suspension. And when mm -hmm. you put it in sport mode and it says, oh, it kind of comes to life. Yep. And then you put it in manual mode, it gets even better. Yep. Downshift, yes. And you get into the turbo. Eight-speed ZF. This, this is an eight-speed automatic. Yes. And it clicks off the shifts and it's excellent and it suddenly becomes fun to drive, despite that turbo lag at the very beginning, mm -hmm. which I've decided I'm forgiving BMW and I'm forgiving this car for. Because it pulls away from like, like mm, just pulls away. It has to ramp up, yeah. And then once it does, you're gone. Yes, You're a rocket. Sure. You're I, almost faster than everything else on the road. BMW, it's insane. I, I, they, are, they are doing something that nobody else is doing, even like Mercedes AMG. Yeah. I think BMW's numbers feel so underrated to everyone else. And bagging. Porsche, Mercedes, everybody else that They're says, this is our number. You have something you get in, you just go, yeah, it feels about right. Every single time I see a BMW number from the factory now, and I drive the car, I go, no, 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 no. That number's really too low. It's too low. Yeah. And it's a four cylinder, and it even sounds not too bad. It it's, sounds okay it's for a four, good. which does matter once you end up in convertible land. Now, I will say, at $70,000, you could buy yourself a couple year old Lexus LC500, which does have a V8 and does sound great. Yeah, now, it does. If you're going to commute, you want to be here because this gets almost 33 miles to the gallon, 33, 34 it's miles to so the gallon impressive. on the highway. It gets high 20s combined. Yeah. Which you're not going to get in a big V8. It also has precise handling it does. despite you feel the handling fighting the lack of structure. And you still yeah. feel it, okay. you know, still feel everything wiggle. Yeah which convertibles always will, despite they do. They're for it's 45% sure. stiffer. Like, what was the last one made out of? Like, jello pudding cups? Or I think, yes. What was it? Now it's stiffer, but now you're feeling the adapt adaptive suspension fight 
with the handling and it's actually turning out to be pretty good. I'm Agreed. pretty impressed how fun this car is to drive, but I'm still wondering who is this car for? Because if it's not the yuppie crowd, the internet entrepreneur crowd anymore that has so many other priorities as far as what they're looking for in life and what you're looking for out of a car and usually it's Tesla, who is buying this? I think it's a husband and wife. This is the third car, the birthday car, and you might want to go on a road trip to see the grandkids. I drove this for a couple of days and I do think I've discovered some things about it that make it completely unique in the market. And Over I think other I've convertibles. Found where it okay. might fit, even though you're right, it's not a status symbol car anymore, which it's for a $70,000 BMW, it should be a status car. It isn't a status car, but it has a, it has a fire. And uh, speaking of symbol, have you seen the front end? The, the teeth haven't gone mm, away. They're no. still here. No, They're no. doubling down, they're tripling down. It's still here. Yeah. The rest of the car is beautiful. It's you gorgeous. walk around, the lights are just so, all the sculptural lines, BMW really still at their best. Yeah. They know how to build a car. They know how to build a fun to drive car. It's a cool convertible. There's space for passengers. Mm -hmm. The interior is engaging and interesting. The materials, the prints, the patterns, the stitching. Yeah. And it's just fun to drive. But then the good thing is you're here. You're here. You don't have to look at it. Or if you notice, everybody just gets out of your way. <laughs> yes, because you're like behind terrified. them at 84. People are just like, I give up. Uh, it's yours. <laughs> just, I just take, move take it over. The ugly. Well, here's yep. because the other reason for that is because if you're sitting in the rear of this car or the rear three quarter of this car, it's gorgeous to look at. You just don't want to look in your mirror and see that nose. Seatbelt extenders. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. Extenders. You can't be asked to do things like reach over your shoulder for your seatbelt. It should just be right here. It's just so BMW. Yes. They've been doing that for a while, but I never cease to laugh about it. This is not some standout interior in the market for me. It's very nice. It's BMW very nice. continues to yeah. kill it with seats. The thing yeah. I'm most impressed by, and I will drive and talk about this, is the fact that this is a genuine four seat car. Yep. That's the thing that I have been thinking about the most while driving this because mm -hmm. we happen to have it at the same time that we have our cheap sports cars. Right. So I right. currently own a BMW convertible. Yeah, true. And true. when I first parked this in my driveway, I parked it beside the 2004 BMW Z4. And this looked like a whale it's by big. comparison. It's big. This is a large car. And at first I was like, convertibles should be small. When I think convertible, I think Z4 or small. I, I just wanted to be small and light and chuckable and that kind of stuff. But then I started driving this and I put it in all the sporty modes yeah. and I drove it around and did some errands and I like looked in the back and climbed in the back and I came to a weird conclusion. Okay. Every now and then we have people write us mm -hmm. the difficult conundrum for the podcast, which is I have this amount of money and I really like convertibles, but I have to take four people everywhere I go or it's me and the wife and it's, the dog and a, a kid. It's a rare request. I it's a need genuine request. four seats. And yeah. we always kind of yeah. go, well, that's really a sacrifice problem right. because right. your back seats aren't going to be usable unless you're here. This is, this is the best back seats in the class. If you want a four seat convertible, this is the top of your shopping list. It is a good place to be. It has a worthwhile top. Also, the top is not a hard top convertible anymore. Yes. It was in the last generation. That's made it 40% lighter, but the finishing on it is superb. It really you close is. it up, you look at the over your, th uh, over your shoulders, everything about the way it fits together, it feels like an actual normal hardtop on the inside. It's the cabriolet. Everything's wonderfully finished. It's honeycomb panels. They're rigid now. It's really... There's more insulation. It's a full-on cabriolet now. And... It feels like a hardtop when you're in here. It They've does. Done a it's it's job. really, really good. Yes. And the other problem with a convertible, typically, is when you close the top, your blind spots are horrific. Yeah, true. This has fantastic over your shoulder, rear three quarter visibility with the top closed. Yeah. You can use yeah. this every single day and never sacrifice your visibility when the top is up. You can put people in the back seat. A, a, a couple, real road trip. A couple double date could do this with the top down and nobody's going, well, I mean, I'm really uncomfortable. I'm glad yeah. we're only going to Nobody's dinner. Nobody's feeling like they got it's the short end of the stick. It's worthwhile back yeah. there. Yeah. And because <laughs> of that cloth top, you have a trunk that is as big as a car this big should have. It's not some it's weird- It's not the greatest. It's not it's some not weird sacrificial trunk though, because there, typically, typically you have space, yeah. a convertible and, you, mm -hmm. and your trunk is like, well, that's just a disaster. This has got a worthwhile trunk. As much as I don't yes. think this should cost 70 grand, but you need it for all the fun packages. Totally. As much totally. as I feel like this is massive and the nose is ugly, 
If somebody said to me right now, I need a four seat convertible, I would say you must, you must drive the four series. That is the huge knock out of the park for this car. And I'm always looking totally for agree. that when we do these test drives is what's the thing this car does that I just am surprised by and don't see anybody else doing. Yeah. This is a four seat usable convertible. Well, what's great about it is the faster you drive, the smaller it gets. True. The, the it doesn't rare feel car big. that does that. Yes is the excellent car to drive. Mm -hmm. And I can feel those direction changes. Yep. They're superb. Yes. The suspension is totally in tune here. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, it's buttoned down. It's a great car to drive. Uh -huh. It's not just a loosey-goosey convertible. And then you combine that with a two liter, that's it. You get on the power here, nobody is ready for you. You're right. And I mean nobody. Well, think of something like the Camry this Solara. This is a phenomenal car to drive. <laughs> yes. It's the great. Think of things like the Camry Solara or the old Chrysler Sebring convertibles. What yes. those were trying to be is a four-seat convertible above all else. Right. And they were terrible to drive. Of course. So here we have a genuine four-seat convertible and to your point, is good to drive. This is I checking it. boxes that I am so not used to being able to have an answer for when somebody writes the podcast. Yep. And this is the reason I love these test drives because we drive a little bit of everything so we can tell you guys about it on the podcast. Yes. And yes. this is a four seat legitimate convertible to drive somewhere to take a road trip with, with friends. Mercedes makes one too, but the good news here is this is a rare car. Yes. When you're looking for something, this is your choice. And the great driver's mm -hmm. car and everything Todd was telling you about, this is a compelling choice and therefore worth the money. Yeah. It's 67 yeah, grand. Yeah, it's a lot, but yeah. That is one C8 Corvette monetary unit. Which isn't a four seat convertible. It's not. Yeah. But if we're talking performance convertibles, you have to pay 80 grand and get yourself a C8. It's almost mm. there and you think, mm. well, Interesting. I shouldn't look at the BMW. And we say, you still should. You still should. As much as I walked up to this car and saw the scale of it and saw the nose of it and yes. just thought, I'm not going to like this. I'm not going to like it. I don't understand it. And then the more I drove it, the more I was like, no, no, no. It's, it's not for me. Yes. But there's a buyer out there that can't really get this elsewhere. And I, and I submit, if you get the C-Class convertible or the A5 convertible, mm -hmm. I don't think your back seats are this good. I don't yeah. think you have as much space. We'll, we'll see, but the back seats are they're superb. They're I, phenomenal. Uh, they, they are much better than they should be. I am used to four seat convertibles being, yeah, technically, technically right, you got four right. seats. Good for you. Like an Aston or yeah, a Jag. For or, sure, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. And even this is a struggle that they've had with 911s and other things as well, where it's just, it's, are they have, they have back seats. Yeah. But this is a car that you can tell that at the core of this, this was a four seat sedan mm -hmm. that they have made into yep. other body styles. Yep. At That's a level that drive. I haven't seen elsewhere in the market. Totally. And agree. it is genuinely fun to drive. This is a success story wrapped in a questionable design. The only thing wrong with this is the beaver teeth. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Everything else about it at the base engine. Above this, yeah, you get even more power. Of course. But this is the car to buy. This is actually the one, even though I still think it's a birthday car. I see that. You could do all the stuff we're talking about. You can commute. You can go fast. 88 miles an hour is no problem. No, this it's thing at 80 feels like 50. Yeah. 101, I don't know how I would know that, but it, yeah, it's pretty good, unruffled. It? It's not yeah, bothered. There's not much noise. <laughs> but I maintain this, this is a milestone car. This is a birthday car. Red ribbon on the top. Look what I got you, honey. I'm telling you. And we can take the kids. Yep.